This is going to be my attempt to beat this GRE vocabulary game available from tyrannosaurusprep.com. But more importantly, I want you to learn at least a hundred new words from this video. So as I go along, please feel free to pause the video and note down words that you didn't know, because all of these could come up in the GRE. I'll also try to very briefly give you a way of remembering the word. So without further ado, because this is a tough and a long test, I am going to start. So the noun we're doing here is a sudden uncontrollable spasm. I did do another video on this test, but it comes up with new words, so this is going to be a challenge for me. Paroxysm sounds a bit like spasm, doesn't it? Paroxysm. It's a sudden uncontrollable spasm. That's how you can remember it. Okay, next one. A person who serves and flatters someone powerful for personal gain. Someone who flatters. That is a sycophant. They're kind of, they're a bit sick in the mind. All they do is try to flatter people and praise them. They might not be genuine about it. They're just trying to get something for their own gain. They are a sick ophant, a sycophant. Fearless, not discouraged. By the way, I might get some of these wrong, of course, because I'm not perfect, but I hope you learn as many words as is possible. Fearless, not discouraged. That would be dauntless. If you are daunted, you're scared. So if you're dauntless, you're fearless. <laughs> Deserving of respect. That would be estimable. You have Great esteem, you are esteemed by many people, that's how you can remember it. You are esteemed, so you are estimable. Remember, you can pause the video and write down these words together with the way that I suggest to remember it. Unless you have a way of remembering these words, you're gonna forget them easily. Writing down the definition isn't always enough. As I talked about in another video, you need to learn a way of remembering the sound of the word to help you remember it. Estimable is linked to esteem, and that's how you can remember it. To pretend to hide under a false appearance. That would be to dissemble. How would we remember that? Well, dis is something bad usually. Disappoint, disgusting. So to assemble or to appear in a bad way, to pretend to put on an appearance that isn't the real one, to dissemble is to pretend or hide under a false appearance. He dissembled, he pretended. To make somebody less angry, that would be placate, to calm them down. Linked to the word placid, which means very calm, like a placid lake. So to make someone placid, you placate them. A sign of approval or respect. That is an accolade. Kind of like an accomplishment. It sounds a bit like accomplishment. You give an accolade to someone who has an accomplishment. It's a sign of approval or respect. Unnatural behavior intended to impress. That would be an affectation. It's pretend affection. Unnatural behavior intended to impress. Affectation. A sudden, unpredictable or whimsical change. Caprice. I talked about this in another video, but it's linked to the word capricious. Caprice. Unpredictable change. To cause or accept or become hardened to, to habituate. That would be inure. It's like building a wall around something. You become inured. You're hardened to something. You don't feel it as much. You're habituated. It's become a habit. You could remember it as being in a wall. In your, in a wall, you're blocked off from everything. Stupid or foolish in a self-satisfied way. That's fatuous. Someone who is fatuous is stupid and they think they're really good. <laughs> to make thin or slender. That is to attenuate. Linked to the word tenuous. Tenuous means just really hanging by a thread. So attenuate, likewise, is to make thin or slender. A sorrowful poem or speech is an elegy. You might say an elegy at a funeral. To improve or make better, that is to ameliorate, I believe. Yes, ameliorate. 
I always thought it meant to soften something down, but okay, to improve or make it better. How would you remember that? Well, this time you could come up with a sound or a way of remembering that ameliorate means to improve something or make it better. Of course, feel free to pause the video at any point to do this. An opening, a gap, a hole. That's an aperture. You often get it in cameras, aperture settings. It just measures how open the lens is gonna to be to let in light. That's how I remember that aperture means an opening or a gap. It looks like I know all these words in advance. I don't actually know this. I'm just, I've got a decent vocabulary, but I might get some wrong. Unnecessary extra, superfluous. Super is like beyond, beyond the normal. So a superfluous word is just beyond what's needed. It's unnecessary, it's extra. We don't really need it, it's superfluous. A sign of approval or respect, we did that already, accolade. Relating to the brain, intellectual, cerebral. Harmful, hurtful, noxious. I still don't know how to pronounce the word, but deleterious, I believe. Harmful, hurtful, noxious. You can think of the word delete. What do we delete? Stuff that's harmful, hurtful, noxious. We don't want it. It's deleterious. The practice of indulging in casual sexual relations, that's promiscuity. Someone who does that is promiscuous. Easily angered, irascible, would be caloric. It's an ancient word linked to the word cholera. I think it's like someone in bad humour. But anyway, choleric is someone who is easily angered. Characterised by excessive haste and lack of deliberation, moving with great force and energy, that would be impetuous. Impetuous. Almost you can think of like an imp. An imp is like a monkey that just jumps around and does things instantly. Someone who behaves like an imp is impetuous. They just do things with excessive speed and they don't think about it. They don't deliberate. That means think about or plan. They just do things without plans. They just speedy like an imp, impetuous. Characterized by proper manners and conduct, that's decorous, linked to the word decorum. Obviously I'm going very fast, but again, you can pause and write any of this down together with the way that I suggest to memorize it, or your own way. A burial chamber, sepulcher, a sepulcher. That's where someone is buried, a sepulcher. Interesting how you would remember that. I'm not quite sure, but you can think of a way to remember that sepulcher. Maybe because it sounds a little bit like skeleton. I know it doesn't, but it starts with an S anyway. Skeleton sepulcher. To stop up, to cut off the flow, to occlude. I didn't know this word in a different video, but I know it now because of practice. And that's what this video is all about. To withdraw a previously held statement or belief, to recant. A cant is a belief. So to recant is kind of like to give up that cant, give up that belief. To do away with or make unnecessary, to prevent. Hmm, obviate. You make something obvious and unnecessary, you obviate. If it's obvious, we don't need to do it anymore. We obviate it, that's how I remember it. Unnecessary extra, do you remember this one? That is superfluous. Truthfulness, veracity. So it's linked to that word veritas, meaning truth or verily, which is where we get the word very from. All to do with that same core of truth. Veracity, veritas, verily, all linked to truth. To summon, to bring into being as if by magic, to conjure up. That's why magicians are called conjurers. To cause or accept or become hardened to, do you remember this one? In your Soothing, a soothing substance is an emollient. It soothes things down, it's an emollient. A little bit linked to that word ameliorate that we did earlier. To make something better, to ameliorate, this is an emollient, it soothes. A sudden unpredictable, do you remember this one? Unpredictable change, caprice. One who distrusts human nature, that's a cynic. 
You might have heard that word cynical, someone who distrusts human nature. You're cynical, you're a cynic. Right, level two, let's see if I can speed up a bit. Oh my God, the irony, to speed up the progress of, to expedite, expeditious. You know, or you might see expedited delivery. I want it immediately, I want to expedite it. Critical, requiring immediate action. That would be, ooh, I'm gonna go with exigent. I often forget that one. Requires immediate action. Like urgent, I guess. Urgent, exigent, linked. It's critical, it's, it's important, it requires immediate action. Exigent. Represented or appearing in one way, but not necessarily that way in reality. Can't see the end of that, I'm sorry, but it says, represented or appearing in one way, but not necessarily that way in reality. Ostensible. It seems one thing, but it's actually something else. It's ostensible. Ostensibly, as in it seems in one way. Ostensibly, he was a nice guy, but he actually wasn't. It seems at first sight to be one thing, but it's actually not. Ostensible. To renounce something. That would be to abnegate. Negate is like to end something, like negation or negative. So to abnegate, you end a belief. A bit like recant that we learned earlier. To free from error. Disabuse. Someone might have an error, an abuse, something that's gone wrong, and you remove, you dis the abuse. You remove the error. Disabuse someone. Intending to betray. Ooh, I might get this wrong. I'm gonna go with perfidious. Ooh, yes, I got it right. Perfidious, someone who is intending to betray. So I'm learning as well. To object, an objection. To object, an objection. Ooh, I demure, I think. Demure means to object, I believe he demurred. To confound, I don't think so, to impugn. Oh, let's go with that. Yes, right. So to demure is to object to something. Transparent, clear in meaning. That is pellucid. Pellucid means clear. Lucid is clear, pellucid means transparent, clear in meaning. To treat the symptoms, palliate. Palliative care is to treat someone's symptoms. Burdensome, oppressive, onerous. This one's quite hard to remember, but I guess if someone owns you, that's oppressive, onerous maybe. Attempting to win favor by flattery and submissiveness, fawning. I would have thought this one was sycophant, but that's a noun, so this is an adjective. So attempting to win favor by flattery, obsequious. That's someone who just praises someone and just tries to get into people's good books by flattering them. They are obsequious. Something that foreshadows a future event. That is a harbinger. A harbinger. It sounds a little bit like herald, at the beginning, ha, and a herald is someone who announces a future event or heralds something. So a harbinger is a bit like a herald, something that foreshadows a future event. Melancholy, gloomy, morose. That is Saturnine, linked to the planet Saturn, which I think they thought caused bad moods or something. I'm not entirely sure. Demanding obedience, a dictator. That is an authoritarian. They are in control. They decide what happens. A bit like an author decides what happens in a book. An authoritarian decides what happens in a country, a dictator. To give back in return. To reciprocate. Linked to a reciprocal in maths. A reciprocal is the flipping of a fraction and the flipping of a favor. To do a favor in return is to reciprocate. To support or adopt, espouse. I espouse a belief, I support that belief. To support with evidence or authority, that is to corroborate. 
You do that if you have an argument and you want to support it with evidence. You could maybe remember that to convict a robber, you need some evidence. So to corroborate is to bring evidence. A group of people with common interest. Ooh, I'm going to go with coterie. I know that means a group of people who follow someone. Yes, a group of people with a common interest, a coterie. To support or adopt, that is to espouse, and we just do that. Yeah. To defame, to blacken or sully, to belittle, denigrate. You put someone down, denigrate. Work or other matters regarded as the concern of women. I learned this when I was studying GRE vocabulary before, and it's a distaff. Work regarded as the concern of women. Imprisonment, the use of threats. That would be duress. You're under duress. You didn't want to do it, but you were under duress. You had to do it. Kind of, I guess it sounds a bit like arrest. You're under arrest. You're under duress. That's how you're, you're imprisoned. You're forced to do something. A child who roams the streets. Again, I learned this only fairly recently. I think it's gammon. Yes, gammon. To bring to a state of completion or perfection. That would be consummate. He is the consummate professional. Complete or perfect. Consummate. Something different from the usual or normal. That would be an aberration. An aberration is something that's very different from the normal ways of doing something. Forget that, that's just an aberration. The use of tricks to deceive someone. Guile. Guile linked to the word beguile, to trick someone. Just like a magician uses guile to conjure things up. To free from error. To, do you remember this one? It was to disabuse. To remove the error, to rem remove the abuse, is to disabuse. A lack of energy or vigour, lethargy, torpor, torpor. Even the word itself sounds a bit sluggish, doesn't it? Torpor. Almost like you can't be bothered to finish saying it. Torpor. To support or adopt, espouse, yep. To cause a division of opinion between groups. That is to polarise. You split into different poles. Soothing, a soothing substance. Do you remember this one? It's an emollient. Intense hatred. Ooh, what would that be? What would the antipathy? Pathy is feeling, anti is against. So feeling against someone, you have antipathy toward them. To harden into bone, ossify, pretty sure. Kind of like fossil is from bones. Ossify is to harden into bone. To proclaim or issue officially, promulgate. That's a famous one, promulgate. To promulgate a belief is to proclaim it or issue it officially. Maybe you can imagine someone at the gate of a kingdom announcing what the king decides. They have promulgated that announcement or that belief. I'm almost there. I'm halfway there. More than halfway there. To weaken is to enervate. You take the nerve out of something. You remove the nerve. You enervate it. To display proudly. To flaunt. Like you're showing off. Oh, he's flaunting his success. A person who serves and flatters someone powerful. Do you remember this one? It's a sycophant. They're sick. They just, all they say is just to flatter other people and just to lie. They're kind of sick. They're a sycophant. They're only doing it for their own gain. Transparent. Do you remember this one? Pellucid. Lucid means clear. And so pellucid means completely transparent. To treat the symptoms. Again, we did this earlier, do you remember? It's to palliate. Harmful, hurtful, noxious is deleterious. Hard to manage, restive. Link to the word restless. 
they're hard to manage, they're fidgeting and rebellious, restive. To tolerate something or somebody unpleasant, that would be, ooh, that's tough. I think it's going to be Brooke. I think Brooke means to accept or tolerate. Yes. So how to remember that? I've thought of the perfect way of remembering it. It's like bro, okay, or okay, bro. Kind of like you're accepting something. Okay, bro, that's Brooke. If you rearrange the words okay and bro, you're brooking something, you're tolerating it, even when it's harsh and unpleasant. Working diligently and carefully. That's tough. I'm going to go with sedulous, I think. Sedulous, working diligently and carefully. Hmm, hard to remember though, isn't it? Sedulous, you can come up with one for that. To display proudly, do you remember? Flaunt. Showing casual disrespect. Hmm, casual disrespect. Ooh, impudent. A bit like an imp again like we saw earlier. Impetuous is kind of like a monkey rushing around. Impudent is also like a monkey. Just casual, disrespectful, just throwing things around. Impudent. Bubbling, excited. Effervescent. Like a scent rising up, bubbling up from a perfume bottle. To treat the symptoms, we've done that. Palliate. To catch sight of is to reconnoiter. Ooh, I got one wrong. I thought reconnoiter means scout. Ah, oh, that's not quite the same thing, is it? Reconnoiter means scout. Descry, I would have got that wrong. Wow, descry means to catch sight of. <gasps> kind of like, I guess, the word spy. To spy something, to descry it, is to catch sight of it. I knew re reconnoiter meant scout, like linked to reconnaissance. But that's different. That's exploring, scouting. This is catching sight of something. Descry or to spy. There you go, I am not perfect. A person who lives for pleasure is a hedonist. Link to the word hedonism. Just doing things for your own pleasure. Of the countryside or country life would be bucolic. Bucolic. Kind of like, imagine like, Deer and rabbits just frolicking around. That's a bucolic scene. Truthfulness. Do you remember this one? Veracity. Critical, requiring immediate action. Do you remember? It's exigent. It's urgent. It requires immediate action. Annoyingly eager to help is officious. A bit like an official who tries to help too much at a match or a government official trying to help your family maybe too much. They are officious. To move from side to side regularly, that's to oscillate. Like a pendulum will oscillate. A worker who travels around. Ooh, this is a fancy one. Peripatetic, I think it's pronounced. I'm not entirely sure. Peripatetic. Kind of like, how would you remember that? Peri. I think peri means around, doesn't it? Like perimeter is around. So peripatetic is someone who moves around, a worker who travels around. Having persistent bad luck would be someone who is hapless, I think. Kind of like they're without happiness. They're hapless, without happiness. They have bad luck, so they're without happiness. Hapless. To free from error. We did that one, disabuse. Demanding, concerned with every detail. Fastidious. They care about every single detail. Fastidious, they always want to be tidy. See that word in the middle, tidy? Concerned with every detail. To tolerate something or somebody unpleasant. Do you remember this one? It's okay, bro. You're gonna brook it, you tolerate it. To make children to cause. That's to beget. To beget, after you beget, you get a child. You're making something. It'd be a fancy way of saying it. Facial expression, composure to tolerate or support. Hmm, facial expression. Countenance, countenance, yeah. You're gonna be composed and you're gonna support something. 
facial expression as well. Look at that expression on his countenance. His countenance betrayed his anger. Annoyingly eager to help. We talked about that. That's officious, like an official trying to help out too much. To avoid, to shun, to keep away from. To eschew. I like that word. It's like you just don't want to do it. You want to eschew it. Like, shoo, go away. I want to eschew that topic. Lazy. I'm sometimes a bit lazy. Indolent. Indolent. Kind of, sounds a bit like insolent. But actually, indolent just means lazy. Always spending time indoors, I guess. Indolent. Feelings of shame and regret would be compunction. Compunction. Feelings of shame. He felt great. Compunction. So free from error, disabuse. Social awkwardness, again, something I'm familiar with. Um, gorgery, I guess. I don't actually know, but I don't think it's the other ones. Gorgery. Never heard of that. Gorgery, social awkwardness. So I would, at this point, remember that word, try and link it to a sound. So gorge sounds a bit like awkward, doesn't it? Awk, gorge, gorgery. Recklessly wasteful, profligate, profligate. He was profligate with his money. A fit of anger is a dudgeon. Kind of like if you've been in a dungeon for a long time, you get really angry and burst out with anger. That means you're in a dudgeon. To punish in public, that would be to pillory, to attack, to, uh, to punish in public. He was pilloried. I think it kind of a little bit linked to like, imagine being strapped to pillars and then just pelted with like tomatoes or eggs or something. That would be to be punished. Boom, I'm on level four. Two levels to go. To treat the symptoms. That is to palliate. We've done that. I'm going to speed up. To trouble with demands. To beg. To beg is to... Ooh, I'm not quite sure. Ooh, what would we do here? Not reciprocate. Patronize. Patronize to trouble with demands. Hmm. Don't think so. Indemnify means to ensure. Importune. I think importune. To eliminate the others, I'm going to go for importune. Importune. To ask for fortune. To ask for help. Importune. To beg for something. It's like a beggar asking for money, asking for a fortune. To importune. Contemptibly cowardly. That would be pusillanimous. <laughs> I can't pronounce that. Pusillanim pusillanimous. I have no idea how to pronounce that word. Um, but yeah, contemptibly cowardly. I think you can think of a little word that might help you remember that that means cowardly. Bubbling excited. We did that. Effervescent. Enormous exceptional. Prodigious is huge. His prodigious. I'm going to go for prodigious. I'm not 100% sure. I know he, prodigious talent means like a huge amount of talent, like a prodigy, having exceptional talent. He was a child prodigy. I just didn't know what refulgent meant. It means shining. Okay. Ordinary mundane. That is quotidian. Quotidian. Like dia is from day. So it just happens every day. Dear, every day, it's ordinary, mundane. Lacking self-confidence is diffident, shy and diffident. Maybe someone who feels they don't make a difference, they don't make a dent on the world. They are diffident, they lack self-confidence. To trouble with demands, we talked about that, that's importune. A person who lives for pleasure, do you remember? Hedonist. To surrender, to give up is to capitulate. You give up your capital, you surrender your army and your capital, you capitulate. The lowest point is the nadir. The top point is the zenith and the lowest point is the nadir. To leave suddenly is to decamp, like an army leaving its camp behind. To do business with is to patronize. Both meanings are quite important. If you patronise someone and just treat them like they're silly, 
that's treating them as unintelligent, patronizing them. But you can also help someone out and do, you patronize a shop. You're doing business with that shop. So it's got two very different meanings, patronize. A young descendant or heir is a scion, the scion of the family, the heir of the family, kind of like the son, I guess you could remember S-O-N, the son, the heir. Serving or tending to repel? Ooh, uh-oh, I don't know. Not recumbent, I don't think, trenchant. I don't think, I think that means fierce. Penitent means like forgiving, refulgent means bright. I'm gonna go for rebarbative, I have no idea. Boom. By point of elimination, rebarbative is like a barb, barbed wire. It repels people away. To treat as a celebrity, to lionize. You treat them like a lion. You give way too much respect. You lionize them. Hard to manage. Do you remember this one? Restive. To defame, to blacken or sully, to belittle. We did this one earlier. It's to denigrate. Annoyingly eager to help is officious, bombastic, swollen. I think that means, I think that's turgid, like a turgid river is swollen river. Didn't know it meant bombastic as well. Swollen river, like full up with a flood, turgid. To indicate by signs, to predict from an omen, an auger. An augury is like an omen, so to augur something is to predict, like an omen. Not straightforward or candid, crafty. That's, ooh, it could be furtive or artful. Ooh, furtive means to hide, to, but crafty, I think crafty is more artful, I guess. <sighs> I might get this wrong. Yes, so furtive is to do something secret, in secret which is kind of a bit like not being candid, not being open, but then crafty is more artful, full of art and pretense, crafty, artful. And again, the highest point, I said that earlier, were you listening? The nadir is the lowest point and the highest point is the zenith. A false rumor is a canard. I think that comes from French, a canard, it's false. The tendency to be untruthful. Well, do you remember truthful is veracity? So can you guess what untruthful is? Mendacity. Artificial and inferior. This is a fancy one. I believe it's ersatz. Yeah, that could be a German word. It's like an inferior copy, an ersatz copy. No idea how you'd remember that. Ersatz. Friendly teasing. That's going to be raillery. Uh, he got railed, he got mocked, he got trolled. Raillery. To treat the symptoms, palliate. Associated with something by chance, not integral. That's, ooh, I think it's adventitious. It's not the main plot. It's like when you're gaming, it's a side plot, it's just a side adventure. It's not part of the core game, it's just a side adventure, it's adventitious. Lacking in nutritive value, uninteresting. That would be juvenile. I'm gonna go for jejune, because I think that's linked to juvenile. I am not entirely sure. Yes, that was just uh, looking at the word. Juvenile, young, jejune, kind of looks similar. So that's uninteresting, jejune. Gruesome, distressing, macabre, famous word, macabre, horrible, gruesome, macabre. I think that's how you pronounce it, macabre. The center of attraction, Ooh, something that serves to guide or direct. Hmm, I'm not entirely sure. I think a coda is something that comes at the end of something. So that doesn't look right. Sinusure? I'm not, Harbinger is like a herald, sophistry is like, False wisdom, dudgeon, is anger, sinusure. There we go, a sinusure is the center of attraction, something that serves to guide or direct, sinusure. 
demanding, concerned with every detail. We talked about that. That is fastidious. They want to be tidy. Here we go, level five. Last level. A slogan. Wow, these are hard. A slogan, I believe, is a shibboleth. That's a slogan, a belief you have, a shibboleth. I think that comes from the Bible. To pray for evil. Wow, that's harsh. To pray for evil. To invoke a curse. I think that's imprecate. I know fulminate is to be angry, but to imprecate. Imprecate, yes, I'll go for that. Yeah, wow, that's harsh. To pray for evil, to invoke a curse, to imprecate. Hmm, a lot of words beginning with imp in this video, but there we go. A beginner is a neophyte. Neo means new, so you're a, a newbie, a neophyte. To argue strongly against some action. To remonstrate. You demonstrate against something, you remonstrate. Debris or discarded material. That's detritus or detritus. It's debris. Very similar to the word debris. You find it on a beach, detritus. Liveliness and eagerness. That's alacrity. Someone with a lot of alacrity does things critical very quickly. Quickly alacrity. Liveliness, eagerness. To surrender, to give up. Do you remember this one? To give up your capital is to capitulate. A crude image of a despised person is an effigy. You often burn an effigy if you really don't like someone. Recklessly wasteful. Having low morals. Profligate. I'm going to go for profligate. Is recklessly wasteful. Regretful for one's sins. One who is sorry. Penitent. If you're penitent, you regret it. You desire forgiveness. I guess like a prisoner, don't they call it a penitentiary? I guess all those people they assume are regretful for the sins they've done. A penitentiary, a penitent. Friendly teasing, do you remember? Raillery. A violent verbal attack. Ooh. I should know this because my name's Philip. I think it's a Philippic. Like a really long, violent attack verbally. A Philippic. To grant privileges of citizenship. That's to enfranchise. When women got the vote, they were enfranchised. They got the franchise, they got the vote. To swell up. I only just about know that this is to distend. Like distended limbs that are swollen up from a wound. A noisy quarrel is a fracas. That's a funny word. Fracas. Oh, there's a fracas over there. I used to say it at school when someone was fighting. Oh, there's just a fracas over there. Done secretly. Furtive. Like a spy. Furtive. Done secretly. To argue strongly against some action is to remonstrate, to demonstrate against. An arrogant attitude or behaviour. Hmm. Probably going to go with effrontery, an arrogant attitude, like putting on a front. Yeah, you put on a front, you pretend that you're really good at something. Effrontery. To foretell something. To do something before is pre, and sage is wisdom. I did a video on this. Presage, presage, to foretell something. You're speaking about it before pre, it happens. Person who tries to please others to gain a personal advantage. A toady, that's kind of like acting like a toad, I guess. Difficult to understand is abstruse, very abstract, obtuse, hard to understand, abstruse. To huddle and tremble, hmm, cower, he cowered in the corner. Shining radiant, that's refulgent, bright and refulgent. To bully, to bully someone is to hector them, 
Wasn't there in Breaking Bad a character called Hector? He was kind of a bully, wasn't he? Anyway, showing casual disrespect. Like a monkey, like an imp, you're impudent. Having wisdom or discretion, that is judicious. You're like a judge. You have wisdom and discretion means you have the ability to decide on things. Silly and sentimental would be, oh, I don't know, not apocalyptic, not maudlin. Plaintive means to complain or be sorrowful um, or sad. Could be plaintive. Fecund, I don't know. I'm going to probably go with that. Uh, phlegmatic means practical. Ooh, I got it wrong. There we go. The second one I got wrong. No! Maudlin, I thought, meant sad. Maudlin means silly and sentimental. Oh, don't be so maudlin. I have heard that word. Someone who is silly and sentimental. Full of sentiments and feelings. Maudlin. I thought it meant sad. There you go. I've learned something. I guess I would think maudlin kind of sounds a little bit like feeling. Feelings, all about your feelings, being being silly and just not thinking with your logic, just all about feelings, maudlin, feeling. To guess at general conclusions based on what is already known. To guess at general conclusions. To extrapolate. You get a certain set of data and you make a conclusion based on that data beyond what is definitely known. Extrapolate. So it's risen for the last three years, so it's probably going to rise in the fourth year, right? That would be to extrapolate, go beyond, go extra, beyond the data. Like an angel, seraphic. A seraph was an angel, so seraphic is angelic. To outlaw is to prescribe. You say that is not allowed, it's prescribed. You can't have it. I'm going to prosecute you if you have it, it's outlawed. Massive and uniform, mono, it's just one big thing. Massive and uniform. Lith is actually stones, so like one massive stone you might see in a desert, like a boulder, monolithic. You could almost say the team was monolithic. They behaved as one giant unit. To make something less dense, to refine, that would be to rarefy, to make it even rarer. Not so dense and collected together, it's rarer and spread out, rarefied. Fruitful in offspring or vegetation, fecund, fruitful. Got that wrong earlier, so I'm not going to get it wrong twice. A person who lives for pleasure is a hedonist. To engage in legal proceedings is to litigate, like a litigator is a lawyer. To do business with, do you remember this one? To do business with and to treat somebody as unintelligent. Patronize. Done secretly. That's furtive. Wait, hmm, I think this game might carry on forever. It might not ever actually end. So I am probably going to call it a day there. I really hope that you have learned loads of new words and that you will remember them using some of the tricks that I taught you today. Don't worry if you didn't know what most of the words mean. This is, as I say, the highest level of vocabulary that you might see on the GRE. Again, I really hope you took something away from this video. And if you did, please do leave a like, leave a comment, leave a question, and of course, subscribe. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.